morning. Hello, my name is Callie De Maria, and I'm an RBT at Breton OV and Associates. Today, I'll be addressing an issue we could all use some work on, sleep. According to the Sleep Foundation, 50 million to 70 million people in the United States suffer from sleep disorders. We can make the general assumption that many people struggle to get enough sleep each night. After reading Lewis Ellie's journal article, Applied Behavior Analysis, Measurement, Assessment, and Treatment of Sleep and Sleep-Related Problems, helped me to construct a strict sleep schedule. The article begins by mentioning a few common sleep concerns. One of the most common sleep concerns is delayed sleep onset. This occurs when children do not fall asleep within a reasonable time after being put to bed. Delayed sleep onset may be the result of a child not being developmentally ready to fall asleep. Overstimulating conditions in the bedroom inconsistent bedtime routines, and consumption of food or drinks that contain caffeine. From a behavior analyst standpoint, consequences maintaining this could include the children receiving social attention from caregivers, engaging in sleep competing behaviors such as video games, or escaping sleeping alone. The researcher used sleep questionnaires, sleep diaries, real-time direct measurement to seek general information about medical, environmental, and interpersonal factors about the individual's sleep habits. Researchers have incorporated the questions about behavioral function into ABA sleep research. The sleep assessment and treatment tool is commonly used, which is an open-ended functional assessment interview conducted with caregivers to target certain variables that may be affecting the individual's sleep. The last section of the article addresses different ABA sleep interventions that can be implemented. The first being a faded bedtime with and without response cost. For this strategy, researchers took baseline data on the average time each child fell asleep. Each evening time to bed was adjusted 30 minutes ahead or back depending on the latency to sleep onset the night before. If children did not fall asleep within their 15 minute window, they were kept out of their rooms for 60 minutes, which was the response cost component before repeating the faded bedtime protocol. The next intervention was differential attention. Furman et al. created a bedtime pass program that consisted of differential reinforcement and social extinction. The children received a free trip card that allowed them to leave their bedroom or one parent visit before going to bed. The parents ignored any other bedtime resistance behaviors. The last intervention mentioned was antecedent and control methods. One strategy mentioned was scheduling positive bedtime routines, which include calming activities during a defined period before going to bed. Research has shown this method can promote earlier bedtimes, shorten latency to sleep onset, and improve duration of total sleep. Even though these methods were originally implemented on children, they can be changed to address adults' needs as well. Overall, the article emphasized the use of functional assessments, which can help to create interventions based on antecedent and consequence variables associated with sleep enhancement and sleep disruption. This can allow any behavior analyst to create an appropriate sleep intervention for themselves, family members, or learners. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe to keep disseminating the science. Bye.